So I just went for my first ride in the bulk MK1 and uh, I'm gonna give you my initial impressions on it. So I kind of like a couple things about it and I don't like some things about it. This NACA duct up here, right here, I feel like that thing did absolutely nothing on this ride and it was all the way open. So not sure what to do about that. Um, one thing I do like about the new dashboard in here is this is the master control. So you slip that on, all your lights come on. One thing I don't like is whenever you go to switch mode, so like if I flip this over to the two, you'll see the front headlights will turn off and then back on. And what that does is it basically enables the flashing mode. Middle turns the headlights off and taillights off but still allows you to use your turn signals. So that's basically your daytime mode. But when you flip this switch over here, turn signals no longer work. So this is your master power switch, which I kind of like. That's something that I never had in uh, my other Villamobile. So now you have two modes. The first mode is gonna be steady. So these back lights are gonna be steady. Now there is no rear marker light on it, but it's quite reflective back here. It's, and you can see if you stand off to one side, you can't really see the other. So I don't think you're gonna get confused which direction you're going. And then you got mode two. All the way down, which gives you the flashing mode. Now some people have said that the uh, turn signals get drowned out. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them on. So you can clearly see the yellow turn signal flashing over the red. Now I can see how that can get kind of confusing with the red and the yellow going, but it is significantly brighter. Now, if you run these on a six volt, you won't even see them. So I think some people who might have ran these were running them on the Lupine batteries, which are six volts. So, or I think they're seven something, but it's not enough to light them up. They're meant to run on 12 volt. Another thing that did a little bit different in here for Lupine lights is this switch here. Instead of having it be its own switch with its own battery, they actually wired it into the battery and into the whole power harness which I kind of like because that way you don't ever have to worry about your switch batteries dying so and it does have the indicator so let me turn my light off so you see that's the high beam low beam again that's low beam high beam so yeah that's kind of just a rundown of it uh, one issue I did have on it is I did have to cut out a piece of the boom right down here the chain was rubbing there really badly and uh, basically had to take a dremel to it and cut out that section otherwise the chain would just sit there and rub the whole time right here's where your lupine battery is supposed to go but uh, you can see I have a little cord running under the seat and I have it hooked up to a 12 volt battery in the back. Right back there. Same one I was running on my Quest. Um, this bulk may not be tall enough for me. I got a lot of pads on there and it's just not doing the trick. And uh, one thing I do want to note is down here. So you put it in the second slot like that. So the second slot on both. First slot on that side second slot it interferes with the headrest you basically are gonna have to cut this seat out you don't want to break up the car fire back here which I don't like I have this neck roll pad that Bellow Wheel NL sent me by accident when I wanted the uh, neck pad for my quest which I'm actually probably gonna end up using this on the bulk because the stock pad sits too far back and I really need a bigger headrest here so 
and he said that you get the small headrest for small people. If that doesn't work, you want the big one for the small people. So, one thing I did notice on this is the uh, sorry print reflectors around the window. So, that's something that they never did before, that I've never seen before on a Velomobile. So, that's pretty neat. Um, now, I did get the Pinlock visor. It's not Pinlock brand. It's Fog City, whatever. But this is the motor rad visor for the bulk. And, I don't know, I'm kind of in between about this thing. And I got it in the nice metallic orange. Let's see, it's all metallic orange. And metallic blue on the bottom. I think it's gonna look really nice on a nice sunny day. Unfortunately, today's my first day I've had it, and it's been nothing but rainy today. Um, one thing I gotta say is this hatch definitely does not keep water out. Even the smallest little bit of water is gonna drip down on you. Anything gets on there, it's dripping down in there. I might, I'm gonna find a way to kind of seal it up, but for now, it's just kind of stuck the way it is. I'll try to leave this thing as stock as possible. Uh, one thing I want to note is this thing is significantly lighter, noticeably lighter than the Quest XS is. When I went to pick this thing up at the airport, it was night and day difference between picking this thing up and picking up the Quest. The Quest is just so much heavier. I did notice that uh, this does have a 12 speed rear, 1 by 12, 60 tooth in the front, 12 in the rear. And I was able to actually do climbs with this today that I normally need the mountain drive in the Quest XS for. So I'm kind of impressed with that. But it did, it did come stock with contact speed tires on the front. And I did have them throw on a contact urban. Actually, I think they might have put a contact speed on the back because it was already done. Yeah, it's a contact speed on the back. So I'm going to have to order a set of contact urbans for this bike so it can go faster. The contact speeds are just kind of meh. They're grippy tires, but they're not very fast. But that's my initial impressions. Um, it arrived undamaged for the most part. Uh, I did notice a little blemish under here, back here. But it's from the mold so I'm not like the molding process so it's done for paint and on the combat lid there is some paint there is some paint showing that wasn't done right here some carbon dust in there so you know it has its blemishes on it and I'm not too happy about that and I wasn't happy about cutting away part of the boom down there on this on this expensive bike but at the end of the day i got it working within one day um i do think i am too small for this thing uh, when i look out here i see this pin and i kind of looking right here so might not be something for me i might have to try to figure something out but yeah that's my new bulk mk1 thanks for watching